I, I like what I'm saying. Um, this had every reason to come down. Instead, what we're doing is curling. Hey everybody, hope you had a great trading day. It was a crazy week to say the least, but looks like we're making some directions here and we're setting up a little bit. So we're gonna discuss that in greater detail, what to look for macroly. But I wanna go through 10 stocks that you need to watch. Some are gonna be buys, some are gonna be shorts. Uh, I do wanna start here with Tesla because we are going into earnings. So just be aware of that, the earnings are coming out. Uh, you know, Basically, you're gonna to wanna to look at deliveries and shipments, that's how the stock moves and who knows what he's going to say. You have this overhang of Twitter. Uh, I'm not really sure that's gonna have any major impact at, at all on the earnings call. Just be aware of it, that it's out there. What we really wanna see is just a clearing of the 763. Until then, we're not really seeing anything, but you are stepping up every sense of the way here. And you can just kind of see that these higher lows, are just they just keep on coming. So that's really what we're looking for. You're looking for patterns like that. Uh, in between trading this, you're not really seeing any real love, right? Like you're trying to get above this level and then you're just kind of bonking around. Let this thing work its way up. You can overlay the indicators in, look where the 50 is. And you can see you're having a really hard time with that. Now, I don't know how we're going to do before earnings, but you're going to have to pay attention to that level. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, click all notifications, especially going into earnings season. You don't want to miss notifications, and we're going to do a lot of uh, private content that you have to be in the subscriber room and all notifications for, um, or you know, subscribe to the channel, not the room, but you get what I'm what I'm saying. Anyway, you see what we're, what we're dealing with right here? So that's what, that's what you're dealing with. I, I like it. I mean, look here, look at this weekly. I, I like what I'm saying. Um, this had every reason to come down. Instead, what we're doing is curling. And if you take a look at what's happening down here on the RSI, your RSI is actually bumping over a little bit, right? Over this line. So you almost have a positive divergence. It's really hard not to like this here. Uh, you're not breaking down all the negative news that came out this week on CPI, PPI, retail sales, business inventories. It was all negative. And here we are, and this stock's moving higher. So I think it's very interesting how we started the week with the rejection and how the, the lower low could not even be taken out. And I think that's what we have to focus on. One thing to keep in mind, too, you write this down as a little pro tip. We are flipping the 21 days on a lot of charts, specifically biotech, which we're going to go over. But we're flipping a lot of these. So you're going to want to watch that 21 day on your charts. Let's get rid of this volume. But just be aware, when they come out with earnings, it is, I believe, as we stated, the 20th. So something definitely to watch. Now, this is one we've been waiting for for a little bit. Uh, we are in this in the trading room and we just kind of been walking around with it. Bought this breakout. Um, breakout didn't work. I, you know, and I'll throw this at you too. Consider using staggered stops right now. All they're doing on us is stop hunting us left and right. And I know people that are listening to this are getting completely frustrated with getting stopped out and watching them go higher. That's just because the algorithms and what they're doing is they're just tricking triggering where the stops are to take you out. You still need a money management system. You can stagger the stop so that it doesn't happen. In other words, stagger a super tight stop up here somewhere, right? And then a super low stop down here. Figure out the percentage so, so it average to where your stop would be anyway. It'll save you a lot of heartache and it'll keep you in trades longer, especially when you have the direction right, but the volatility is greater than you think it is, right? Like this is a great example of that. But with this close, uh, I do think you can push uh, next week. This is an all-time high close. Let's just look at this. All-time high closes are kind of hard to beat, kind of hard to bet against. You have nothing but blue skies above you, and as long as you have nothing but blue skies above, it's very difficult to not want to play those kinds of names. And we should discuss Taiwan Semi because if semiconductors are going to move, there's two names in particular that I think are going to do really well. Taiwan Semi, their conversion to 5 to 7 nanometers which is basically Apple, Qualcomm, and NVIDIA, is over 50% of what they're selling now. That's why they had record profits. So it's also why their gross margins went up to almost 60%. So they really knocked the cover off the ball. It's very, it's very hard to say that they didn't. Now, what I like about this is we're starting to finally get over that 50 on the RSI. You haven't even seen an attempt of that uh, since May. 
And if you just kind of take a look at the back of this, and I really do look at that RSI line, there's only been a couple very feeble attempts all year long once we cracked, right? So very feeble attempts to get there. So let's watch what what's happening here. I'd like the trajectory of it and I like how it's pointing. So I do think that we have the opportunity to get a little bit higher here. Uh, we're going to want to look at just where some of the other levels are just so we, we know where we stand. You have to watch this 50 day. Since you broke the 50 day back here, you've not been above it. So watch how it acts at that level. And we haven't flipped that higher high yet on Taiwan Semi. We know the earnings. We know they're good. We know the utilization rates. We know what they're doing. So we don't have to we don't have to guess about the earnings side of the equation here. Now, another one that is doing everything that it needs to do is this GFS. I uh, caveat, I have a position in this actually very close 45 50 right right where it is. So we flip that higher high. Now, here's the difference between the two stocks. You're always trying to figure out which one looks better. Well, here's this higher high. We haven't really flipped that yet. This chart set up a little differently and we flipped it right here was resistance and resistance becomes what? Support. So we flipped it. Now I'm looking for $48. We'll see how we do there and we'll see how we act at the 50. But if you're looking for names that may bounce that are in, in the chip sector, I, I would be looking at this versus looking at NVIDIA because between the, the bill that's outstanding and I know Nancy's in, uh, in NVIDIA, but I, it, it's just not doing what I want it to do. It's not making that higher high. It's not over. So again, I'm constantly looking for relative strength and I want to see stocks that are at least performing as well as the underlying index or what the heck's the point? I'll just buy the index, right? If I'm not over the 21 day and I'm not hitting a higher high, then why would I really want to be in it, right? I at least want to do that or I can just go out there and just try and trade SOXL and just get 3x the leverage on the index, right? And try that, right? Because that's even that even looks better than the video. So Keep that in mind. That's kind of one of the easiest ways to sort through your names and come up with some ideas. So I purposely don't run ads. So if you can do me a favor and just simply share this on social media, it would be greatly appreciated. I Any way that you could support the channel and I don't really want to waste your time with ads. So LABU, this is one that we're trading a lot of. You see these hammers, they're all over the place. Let me just show you this very clean and give you an idea of what you should be doing with your trading. Okay. Uh, in the trading room, I say it a lot. and I say it in these videos, you need to mark off your key levels so that when they get to key levels, okay, so like, let's say I have the chart set up like this today and I'm looking at it and all of a sudden I see this line down here. I can go, huh, I wonder what that line is. Now, maybe I'm not looking at that in 15 minutes. Maybe I'm looking at that. Um, I'll give you an example. Like, let, maybe I'm looking at that here. Like I'm looking at that on a, let's flip this to a, uh, yeah, let's just keep it where it is. It's fine. I was going to flip it to a two, two, double screen, but that it's harder for people on mobile. But you see that line right there? So if I'm down to, let's say, a five minute, right? And I can see that over here and we'd want to see that and pay attention to it. But maybe I'm down even something even a little thinner. I'm at a one minute. And all of a sudden, um, this is right there. And I can't go over anymore because there's no data. Well, that's going to let me know to look at a larger time frame to understand where I'm supposed to be, right? So always leave these lines in. But this 811, this is pretty clear what to do here. We've been doing this left and right in the trading room. When you're down 10%, we've been printing it. Printing it means we've been buying it. I guess that's an old school term, but that's what we call it. Uh, but you can just see you're building this little flag right here. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, you know, I'm waiting for it to break 10 to add to it again. But this this whole sector you need to be looking at. Uh, you can see how this all this is just really setting up, right? This is kind of what the base has been of XBI. Um, this is something we've been in. If you don't get the newsletter, there's a free version uh, and it comes out three times a week now. And I'd recommend that you get it so you can follow along and also be aware of what how the week ended and what to look for the next week. It's pretty informative, actually. Uh, so what you're seeing here is this little move and this little, right? But look at this 21 pointing up. Look at this 50 starting to curl up. There's no other sector really in the uh, S&P that's doing this. So it's clear where the leader is going. And it makes sense because we really don't have to worry about inflation as much as you do with hardware companies uh, in XBI. So I really do like this. Now, uh, Netflix. Netflix is coming out with earnings. They, I believe they are on, what is it, Tuesday they're coming out, 19th? So they're coming out with earnings. Here we go again. They're trying to push it over the 50. Uh, maybe they push it over the 50 
maybe they do exactly what they did here last time. So uh, just caveat, I'm short this already. Um, I was short it this time and did very well with it uh, and stayed in it. You know, I actually shorted it when it looked like it was going to break down here. And I, I, I put the position on in a way that I wanted to stay in for the, the actual earnings after this. Uh, Subscriber growth is going to be your big driver here. And what you're going to want to look at with subscriber growth is you're really going to want to focus on one key metric. Look for how many they lose. So if you want to see how the stock's truly going to do after hours, look for how many subscribers they lose. They're predicted to lose something like 2 million. Now there's a, a rumor out there floating around and you never know if these are true or not that they're, they're 800,000 off that number. So they're more close. They're closer to three. So if they're closer to th 3 million, and that, let's just say that that number's right, then I can expect another drop like this. I mean, the last two earnings were 35%, 30%. Um, unless you're in, in there counting, I, I don't know how in the world you can possibly think that you should be buying this ahead of earnings, uh, unless you just think that it's so negative that you're gonna give it a shot. And that's the only thing that I could think of, or you think Stranger Things is gonna save the day, that's not really how I invest. I, I basically look at the fundamentals and the technical chart pattern uh, and try to make longer term plays um, and not, you know, really deal with this noise. I could care less. It's up 8% today. To me, it just presents an opportunity to short more. So up to you how you play it, but that's definitely something that I would focus on. And I would also focus on a lot of these biotech names. So names like CRISP. Okay, you can see these names. Look, they're, they're breaking down. And this is exactly what I was saying. And I want to make this clear, like you have to have your lines in, okay? You have to have your lines in and you have to not be skittish. So if you were up here and you bought this breakout, which I actually bought that breakout, right? Then you come down here. I didn't sell this because I knew my line was here. I want to see it close, right? See, any algorithm can take you down and trigger a stop, right? They can do it. They can, they can just constantly churn to get those trades down. I don't think they should be allowed to do it, but that, I could do a whole video on algorithms. But here's the line, right? So you know where your line is. Let them trigger you and just stay out of the way. Go for it. And then see, because they, they don't have the money and they don't have the, the ability to keep it down. And that's why you wait for the close. And what did it do? Formed a perfect, beautiful hammer and then traded up and closed at the high. These are the kinds of names you want to be looking at. Okay, I, I can't stress it enough. Biotech, biotech, biotech. They're the ones that are working. This, this was one that we, we were in in the newsletter at 281, and now we're at 293, and we're getting ready to push again. Uh, please comment because the reason that on these videos, because the reason I'm going over more of a macro view on a sector is because of the comments. They help me create the content. So your comments are read. I answer every single one, even though it kind of takes some time. But focus on this particular sector. I, I can't stress that enough. Uh, these kinds of names are exactly what you need to be looking for. And I'll give you one that they were trading in the room. It wasn't my kind of trade, but they, you know, they kind of nailed it. I mean, you broke out, you broke out of here at 11, formed a flag, and then today this was hitting uh, 14. Anything that has the words therapeutics or bio in it, okay, they're all seeing action. Look at this. We flipped the upper channel, and now what are you doing? You've been basing and setting up another flag. You're getting ready to break 4470. Right. All this from 15, while we're all talking about inflation and CPI and everything else. Meanwhile, th these stocks are running. I mean, how many people have doubles in stocks? Right. Not not many right now. So keep that in mind. I like the sector a lot, but we really should be focusing on what's going on macroly. And then what can we do about that? Right. And then look at the underlying fundamentals of the market. So here's the 10 year. And this is this is the thing that I'm trying to reconcile. The 10 year is essentially going flat. Okay, the 21 is coming down and the 50, we can't get above. This is yield. So this means as yield drops, prices rise. Okay, yield drops, okay, prices rise. So that means people are buying the 10 year. Well, if the Fed is going to raise rates 100 basis points or 75 basis points July 26th to 27th, how the heck are they going to raise rates, right? It, the, the bond market's telling you, no, they're not. In so many words, right? That, that this they're going to have that they're going to trigger a recession and they're going to have to stop. Now, business inventories came in. They they showed that you're starting to see a glut in business inventories. They were higher than expected, and then on top of that, we saw 
uh, CPI, which was through the roof, PPI was through the roof, and we shook it all off. You know, I have that equation, bad, bad news plus higher prices is bull, means a bullish market. And that's what you're saying. You're also seeing them buy junk bonds. So if we were worried about the stability of companies, bond investors who really go through the macro and fundamentals of companies are not buying high yield bonds, right? Unless they're comfortable with the underlying economy. Well, they're buying bonds. This broke out here off this level. Now, maybe you push that 50 and get to 94. If you're trying to look for a little scalp, maybe it's there. But these are the this is what's going on under the hood. And we're going to go through some other key metrics here. But this was the most glaring thing to me today that you have to pay attention to. So I, I don't even have I don't even know what you would call this particular pattern. This wedge line has marked every single time that we have sold off. Every single time that we have sold off since April is marked by this trend line. If you overlay this trend line as we've done in the past with other videos, you will see it lines up perfectly with this. Rally back over it, one, two, three, right? You have three days to get back over a trend, right? And then what did we do? We came down, now we're here. So the VIX coming down means that they are not buying puts on the S&P. Well, if they're not buying puts on the S&P, Right. I mean, that's why the VIX, that's what that's all the VIX is. Just so you get that it's puts on the S&P. So if this comes down, it essentially means that large institutions are selling puts on the S&P. Just think of it that way. Right. But you can actually use it as a guide like that. So if I'm breaking down here, that means I'm reducing my need to be hedged on positions. So if you start putting all that together and then you kind of go, OK, well, how is that affecting the market? Here was my trend line on the S&P. I broke it. This was support. We only had this one little anomaly out of this since May. So could you say that you have a base here? You could say you have a base, right? You could say you have a support level, right? Let's get rid of these for a moment. You could say you have a support level and you had the anomaly where you popped out of your support, right? Wasn't even there for three days like we just talked about. You're back in and now you'd have a resistance level. Those levels, you might want to write them down and watch them, but you have a base. You are forming a base. Now, whether or not that base leads to a, another leg down, right, or leads to this and then this, this or this, we have no idea. We don't know. What we know is that we have a base. That's what we know. And we know that if we close over this 390, it's probably something that we should be paying attention to. I mean, you can go here and take a look at the trajectory and see that you're still grossly you know, under your trend. I mean, you can see that, right? So I'm not getting too excited, but what you're doing is you're working off the oversold condition. And as you're doing that, you might want to pay attention to that, right? That might be something that, that you should pay attention to. You look at the cues, higher, low, higher, low, higher, low, and you're getting ready to, to test that 297 again. If you overlay what's going on here, you're right against that 50. I mean, you're you're right there and you have not flipped that 50 since the last time you were above it was April. You know, if you do that now, you, you might want to be paying attention to it. So the question is, are we going to run up in the earnings season, right? Earnings season starts next week with the Tesla and the NVIDIAs. And then you start having the, the big guys come out the week after the Apples, the, the Metas, the Googles come out the week after. And then we go right into what? The Fed meeting. So the next two weeks are going to be a lot of fun. Uh, there's going to be a lot of opportunities to make a lot of money, in my opinion. I, you're, you're going to have some really wild swings, I think. You're going to get rid of all this little bouncing around nonsense that's boring everybody. And it's about to get, in my opinion, very real on trading. Uh, but just watch this. See how you held this? You broke that level and then you can't get above it. That's exactly what you want. That's exactly what you're looking for. I mean, look, it doesn't get any clearer than the market feels differently than corporations, right? So you have something like JP Morgan that comes out and says, times are so bad, we don't want to buy our own stock, 9% inflation, and we'd rather own dollars than own our stock. I mean, they tell you, that tells you where they think their stock's going. What did the stock do, right? I was short this, I had to cover it, right? So what did the stock do? The stock went all the way back up to this trend line. So why is that happening? Because people are looking at this and thinking completely differently than what they're actually saying. Look at the actions, right? Price pays, converse, everything else is conversation. So think about it from that perspective, because that's that's really what's going on. And you're starting to see more venture funds step in and start buying things, right? Pins, all of a sudden, someone's taking a 10% stake in pins. 
You know, Elliott Management is known as someone that comes in, cuts costs, and sells your company. When the venture fund starts stepping in, start paying attention. When you start seeing insiders buying stock, like they bought, uh, Bob Ger or Bill Gurley bought a million shares of this. Okay, he's not looking for a quick trade. He thinks that they're going to cut costs and the stock's going to go higher or they're going to sell the company. Okay, the same thing with people like that, that the CEO of Best Buy that bought stock in the open market. There's a reason why they're doing that. So there are other signs that we could start putting those together and saying, wait a minute, the insiders are putting their money where their mouth is and they're actually buying their stocks at these depressed levels. So maybe we should pay attention to that, right? That's all I'm saying. This was one that we did where it was really very clean, right? We ran up and then they put themselves up for sale unanimously. It's actually still trading under book value, okay? So you're trading under book value still by 75, you're 75 cents on the dollar here. And they put themselves up. So you're at least going to get tangible book value on a real estate company, right? At a minimum. So these kinds of names, when you start seeing them going, hey, this is ridiculous. Let's just sell the company. And then it's up 100%, right? That's, that's what you want to look for, all right? You know, when LABU was down, when we first started buying this at like 440 and you were down here, right? The reason we were doing this and took the shot wasn't anything technical, right? We were just trying to predict what was going to happen. And the reason for that is because at that time, it was something like 25 to 30% of all biotech companies were trading under cash. So there's some significant signs here that underpin this market. Now, how long that lasts, it, we, the market can always get more irrational than we can stay liquid, but we need to pay attention to it. And that's, where, that's what I really think you should focus on. Next week's going to be a lot of fun. So is the week after. Any questions, any comments, please leave them below. As always, subscribe to the channel. Click all notifications, especially during these next two earnings weeks. Uh, if you're interested in the trading room, there's a link in the top right corner. Click the preview link and it'll show you what's going on in there. Everyone else, you know, have a great weekend and trade to win this week.